The Vendée Globe is an around the world race, therefore endurance counts. Still this year it looks more and more like a sprint race. Better, a record breaking race of distance in 24 hours. It's never been so true. This week's performances have reached unimaginable levels since the start in Les Sables d'Olonne. The conditions for the record are well defined now. But who, of François Gabard or Vierbac Papreg, Jean-Pierre Dic, will get it? That's the question. The boats in the lead cover over 500 miles a day. To imagine what this means, look at these images. We barely can hear François Gabard. But listen to the noise, feel the vibrations. Here's the Indian Ocean in all its splendor. I think we're in the heart of things. With wind at 35, 40 knots. The boat's between 22 and 28 knots. It's quite impressive. I don't have much sail out. It didn't ballast much either. Trying to play cool, but it keeps speeding up. So I check, stay on the watch, eyes and ears on the lookout, but mostly avoid braking. For the last four hours, we're sliding fast and rather effortlessly for the boat. I try to make the most of it, so much the better. And to profit, François Gabard profits. On Monday, December 10th, he covers 545 miles within 24 hours. New record on the Nimoca in Solitary, which means an average of almost 23 knots, 80 miles more than Michel Desjoyeaux's best performance four years ago. In the sailing world, the word is out. On this very same day, December 10th, they've gathered to select a skipper of the year. What's more, the celebrated happy winner of the Volvo Ocean Race only talks about that. Frank, aren't you impressed with the speeds reached by the monohulls today? What they're able to accomplish in solitary is magnificent. I think boats have really improved in the last 10 years. So yes, 540 miles for sure. When you've been on boats with a team, the Volvo 70, we do almost the same, maybe 40 miles more. But on solitary, it must be hard to keep up these averages. Boats are well prepared. Pilots seem to handle them perfectly. I have a feeling all is well set. But pure speed isn't the only thing in this Vendée Globe. Strategy can make a difference too. Like Armel's, which led him to pass the Crozet Gate first last week. He then plunges south as the others are moving up north to cross the gate. As a result, Armel widens the gap with his pursuers, even if for a small while, he lets go of his lead in Bernard Stamp's favor. But for Bernard, it's the beginning of a complicated week. We're out of the anti-cyclone. I'm going down south, hoping it won't be for long. Yesterday was one of those crazy days. Today we'll partly fix yesterday's mistakes. I'm going to replace the baton number four that's broken. We see it in the L of Pujula. The team prepared the places where I need to saw according to which baton is broken. The only thing I need to pull in this mainsail. Bernard Stam is exhausted because of his mainsail's baton. Here's the work. What a job. Only because of a stop of the automatic pilot. I'm floored. Now I have to tidy up as usual. We can feel his weariness. What can be said about Alex Thompson's? This week the Englishman collides twice a phony within 24 hours, destroys his hydro generator, damages a router, and finds himself coping with the same repairs as almost a month ago. Obviously, these damages don't help the Swiss or the Englishman's plans. At the lead, it's moving along. Only Jean-Pierre Dic is able to keep up with the two fierce leaders' pace.
Here is the situation. The incredible situation. A never seen before in the Vendée Globe. Two men side by side at 42 degrees south. Side by side could also be spelled elbow to elbow. Our buddy François did well overnight. He was fast, just below the wind at about four miles. We're doing well on board Vanque Populaire. It's quite damp, a rough night. Rough sea with good surfs, good averages. It's rather wet on deck. We're 2,000 miles from Cape Lewin. Next Cape to pass after the first, the Cape of Good Hope. A photo resumes the situation well, sent by François Gabard Tuesday morning upon passing the Amsterdam gate. He's ahead of Armel Leclerc by 20 minutes, 20 minutes after 24,000 kilometers. François's performance doesn't cease to impress everyone. Questions are raised as he somehow duplicates what Michel Desjoyeaux, his mentor, did four years ago. Over the last 72 hours, we saw Gabar faster by one knot on average as he made up 70 miles on Armel in 72 hours time. We have the feeling he's got something more. I don't think he's over pushing his boat, maybe a different sail because one knot difference isn't that huge. It shows a slight difference which is interesting. A little like what Michel Desjoyeaux did four years ago. It's very interesting. We'll find out more when they come out of the Great South and hopefully reveal their secrets. But the Great South, they're in it for a few more miles. The famous Great South, the one all skippers dream of, and that only a few get to know. Here's the ambiance of the South Seas. It's kind of wet outside. It's gray, gray, gray. Very gray. We're pretty lucky to be here, even if at times it's tough. Maneuvers are physical. We're very much into it. They're great moments still. A beautiful rainbow. True, must be nice to see on TV. Here's an albatross. This is what they look like. But the south is ever more heavy weather, huge waves, strong blowing winds. The wind went up to almost 50 knots. I'm going to roll the Solon. Relax. Relax. After the storm and the iceberg alert, Japanese like. And in the south, the bodies take the rap. A good third of the molar disappeared. It's raw. So when I breathe, it's really painful. It'll be okay. This is to make a filling. In naval construction, a filling is a mix of glue. Bernard Stam plays dentist. It reminds us of Bertrand de Broek sewing his tongue in 1993, also here in the south. Bernard Stam is well, thank you, physically at least, because in the ranking it's not exactly the case. In this fifth week, the race is seriously settling, because in the south a lot happens, and at the moment, 
Here is a turning point, clearly, in the sense that the weather works in our favor at the lead for Armel and I. Behind, they don't have the same conditions. Jean-Pierre is on the brink of catching up the system. I don't know if he'll make it. My greatest fear at the moment is to be dragged into this anti-cyclone, this enormous ridge that would mean hundreds of miles and days wasted over my two leading opponents. François Gabard and Armel Lecléage, very near to each other, are heading off. Jean-Pierre Dick is fighting it out to remain in the same weather system. Alex Thompson and Bernard Stam are already in another. The gap now widens rapidly. In two days, they lost several hundred miles. Friday noon, Jean-Pierre Dick is 300 miles from the lead. Alex Thompson, 500. Bernard Stam, almost 600. And it should increase still. Might as well say a new race is shaping up. Today's Friday, December 14th, 46 degrees south. Just started wearing warmer clothes, hats, heavy woolen overcoats, the foul weather gear right behind me. We're 300 miles away from Cape Lewin, which we should cross tomorrow night. And while the first arrives at Cape Lewin, the last just passed the Cape of Good Hope. Cape of Good Hope. I just passed Cape Town. December 12th. 2012. There. First cape of this magnificent Vendée Globe dream. Champagne.